Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 9.3, which discusses distance formula and circles. And we're also going to introduce midpoint as well. Now, you might think, what does the distance formula and midpoint have anything to do with a circle? Well, let's take a look at two points. We have a point 2, 3 and a point negative 4, negative 1. Now, if I want to find the distance between these two points, what I can do is I can say, well, I could go straight across from one point to the other. That's what I'm looking for. What is this distance? Well, if we think about it, since it's on a Cartesian coordinate graph, we could think, well, what's the x distance over to here and the y distance up to the point? Well, if we think about what we're making, this is our change in x to go over to this value. And then to go up to the point, we have a change in y, the distance here. We're dealing with distances, right? This makes a right triangle. If we recall how we work with right triangles is we always use the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is Pythagorean theorem, something we should be somewhat familiar with. Well, if we just replace our values of our Pythagorean theorem, with the values we find here on a Cartesian coordinate plane, we have c squared equals the change in x, which is my a value. We'll let it be a squared, plus my change in y squared. And that is essentially the Pythagorean theorem using Cartesian coordinate nomenclature or values here. So how do we find a change in x? Well, a change in x is one x value minus another x value. So let's call this point 2 and this point 1, two different points, point 1, point 2. The y value is the change in y. So we say, well, y2 minus y1, the difference in the y values. Now, we want to find the distance. So let's change the c to a d. And if it was squared, we have d, d squared plus change in x squared plus change in y squared. So we're just manipulating Pythagorean theorem. Now, if I wanted to solve for the distance, I would have to take the square root of both sides. And one thing I recall about distances is distances are always positive, so I don't have to worry about a negative value. So I don't have to worry about plus or minus. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get distance equals the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. This is called the distance formula. It is just a manipulation of the Pythagorean theorem. Because if we want to find the distance between two points, we find the square root of the quantity change in y squared plus change in x squared, or vice versa. And we can see that's what we get. So we can find that distance. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the distance between two points. Well, my change in x is going to be 0.2 minus 0.1 x values. 2 minus a negative 4 is a positive 6, 6 squared. The change in y. 3 minus a negative 1 is 4, 4 squared. Now we can do, simplify this. 6 squared is 36. And 4 squared is 16. 36 and 16 is going to give me 52. And so the distance between these two points is the square root of 52. Well, maybe we can simplify this a little bit more, because we've worked with radicals in uh, chapter 6. So 52 can break down to 26 and 2, which breaks down to 2 and 13. If I notice here, I have a perfect square, two factors of 2, or 2 squared. So I can rewrite it as the distance equals the square root of 4, 2 times 2 is 4, is 2. Or since I have two factors of 2, 1 comes out, and the square root of 13. 
the distance between these two points is 2 square root of 13 units, whatever these units might be. Maybe they're inches or feet or centimeters or miles. We can use the distance formula by finding the square root of the change in x plus the change in y, both of those quantities squared. Now, we can also find midpoint. And the midpoint is, well, what is the value in between here? And we use these things when it comes to working with circles. And that's why we introduce this in the section for circles. If I want to find this midpoint, well, it looks like it might be the point negative 1, 1. But I want to be sure. So I'm going to do it algebraically. Well, the midpoint has a formula. And the midpoint formula is the sum of the x values and divided by 2 and the sum of the y values divided by 2. Now, if we think about what this formula truly is, is it is the average x and the average y. It is the spot in between these two points, x, y, x, y. The average x and average y. You can spend the time to memorize these formulas. But if you can think of a shortcut, use it. Here we have the sum of the x's divided by the number of values we had. So this is essentially the average x. We just found the average value. Here, to find the y value, we find the average y value. Let's actually do that. If I want to find the midpoint, let's look at the x value first. What is the x value for the middle of this point here, the middle in between the two points? So I take 2 plus a negative 4. Well, that's negative 2. Since I have two points, or two x values, I divide it by the number of x values, negative 2 over 2. The y value, well, we have 3 and negative 1, which gives me a positive 2 over 2. And if we simplify this, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. 2 over 2 is 1. So the midpoint for this example is negative 1, 1. So the midpoint between these values right here is the value negative 1, 1, just like it appeared on my graph, negative 1 in the x, 1 in the y. So that is our midpoint. Average x, average y. No need to memorize this formula. But if you choose to, you're welcome to do so. That is the formula that you can use for midpoint. Otherwise, average x, average y is the point that is in between two points of interest. Now let's see how this all applies to circles. Let's consider some point hk and some other value xy. Now notice there's no scale on this uh, Cartesian system here. So we're just going to leave it as h and k, x and y. Let's apply the distance formula. If I want to find the distance between these two points, I take the square root of the change in x. And hopefully we recall h is a x value. x minus h, quantity squared, plus the change in y squared. Well, the change in y would be y minus k. Now, let's get rid of this square root for a moment. Let's square both sides. And uh, we'll see that we're going to change this variable from d to something else. Now that I've squared this value after plugging it into the distance formula, this is almost the equation of a circle. Now, because these are undefined points, they didn't have any values. This is just any x, y. It could have been a point over here. And the hk is some fixed point there. Well, what happens is no matter where this x, y is, maybe it's over here, the distance between any value x, y from this fixed point hk is what we call r. And that r is a radius. So let's change this to r, because we're dealing with something new. We're not just dealing with distance. Now we're dealing with a radius. Any point that's r units away from a fixed point hk will actually form, and hopefully I can draw a nice circle. Well, it's not too uh, perfect, but hopefully you get the idea. Any point is going to be this distance away, which we call r. No matter where that point is, it's r units from the center. 
This is the equation of a circle in standard form. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. And we generally write it from left to right. So we can determine several things from this. This just looks just like Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Triangles and circles are described by the exact same equation. Interesting, isn't it? So here we have the equation of the circle. We can determine its center. Well, its center is the fixed point h, k. And if we recall in parabolas, the h value was always the opposite of what I seen in these parentheses before we squared it. That still holds true. And because the k values in parentheses before we square it, how it affects the y value, it's always the opposite of what we see in there. So we can determine h and k. We can also determine the radius. Well, the radius is the square root of the value we see here. Because we don't want r squared. We want just r. So we would take its square root. And that radius would be the value r. So let's see how this actually applies. Let's look at a circle. Let's graph a circle in standard form, x squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared equals 4. With this, I can determine the center. Well, the h value is the value I'm subtracting from x before I square it. What am I subtracting from x before I square it? Well, there is no value being uh, subtracted. So h is 0. What value am I subtracting from y before I square it? Well, it's always the opposite of what I see in there. It would be y minus a negative 3. So the value I'm subtracting from y is a negative 3. I'm able to determine the center of this circle just from its equation. Now I want to determine the radius. To determine the radius, what I have to do here is look at this value here. This is r squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, just like in Pythagorean. This value is squared. So what's the square root of 4? Well, because a radius is a distance, I don't have to worry about the negative value. So I say r is the square root of 4 which is 2. r is 2. So now I know its center and I know its radius. I can graph this circle. Its fixed point, or its center, is 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3, and I'm just going to make my own graph here. That's negative three, 0, negative 3, and I'm going to label it 0, negative 3. Now I want to have some other points on the circle, so I have enough of them to draw the circle, or at least as accurate as I can with a piece of chalk on the board. Its radius is 2. In any direction from this fixed point, center, hk, I can go 2 in any direction. That will be a point on my circle. So I'm going to go two spots to the right, 1, 2, and two spots up, and two spots down, and two spots to the left. And hopefully, that's enough that I can go ahead and draw a circle. So we have a circle of center 0, negative 3, and a radius of 2. From this point to anywhere on this circle is going to be 2 units away. All right, let's look at another uh, graph, or well, we're going to graph. And this, believe it or not, is a circle, but it's not in standard form. So how do we put a circle in standard form? How do I get it to be x minus h quantity squared y? minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. Pythagorean theorem, a squared, b squared, c squared. Well, in order to do that, this value has to be a perfect square. And so does this value. And if we recall a tool that we learned in the past, it's called completing the square. Here's where you have to use completing the square. So what I recommend you do is to separate your variables. I have x squared plus 6x. And then I have my y variables. And I'm going to write them in descending order, y squared minus 4y. And this all has to equal 3. So I left some spaces here because I'm going to complete the square, not just once, but for each variable. So I have to do it twice. So to complete the square on the x variable, I determine my b value, 1 half of b squared. 
Well, half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. I need to add 9 to make this a perfect square. But I have to recall the property of equality. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Put a sign in there. I'm going to complete the square here as well. Half of my b value for the y's would be negative 2. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. If I add 4 to this side, I have to add 4 to that side. So now I've completed the square for both variables. Now they're perfect squares. This factors to x plus 3. And this factors to y minus 2. And 3 plus 9 plus 4 is 16. Now we see this is a circle in standard form. We have the, uh, the difference in x and h squared. The difference in y and k squared equals the radius squared. So now I can determine its center. And an easy shortcut is to recall it's always the opposite of what I see in these parentheses before I square it. So it's x minus a negative 3. And y minus 2, a positive 2. Its radius is the square root of this value. Well, the square root of 16, my radius is going to be 4. With this information, I'm ready to graph the circle. So if we're going to graph a circle, I'm going to go to the point negative 3, 2. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then up 1, 2. Here is my point negative 3, 2. And I recommend you always. Uh, label that center, hk. Now I need to go 4 in all directions in order to make a circle. So I'm going to go 4 this way, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to go 4 down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to go 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to go 4 to the left, which will put me right about there. And now I'm ready to draw a circle. And hopefully it looks like a circle. Pretty close, at least. right? If I had a nice compass, it'd look perfect. But hopefully, we get the idea that once we find the center and we know the radius, we can go in all directions, that radius from this fixed point, the center, and we can graph a circle. All right, one last one. And this is going to be for you to try. This one is to graph a circle, identify its center, hk. and its radius, and then graph it. Now, you'll notice it's not in standard form. So you'll have to rearrange your x values and y values to group them together, complete the square twice, and write it in standard form, and then determine your center and radius. So this has been section 9.3, distance formula, midpoint, and circles. Thank you for watching.